Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today webinar. Um, it's going to be about price action. Basically, it's going to be interactive. It's going to be practical. Um, I'm going to talk again, maybe a little bit of everything that I've been talking between spice uh, about where to find those spice, about support resistance, about supply demands, about um, where usually you can find the orders. Uh, the fresh orders that maybe can find some the price usually is going to react or bounce from. Um, wait for how to wait for confirmation maybe to find those that uh, high probability trades instead of just um, identify for example identify this demand zone instead of just looking straight away to to try to trade from this demand. I would like to see some confirmation before that like that requires as well to look at uh, how price is approaching the the zone of interest right it's not just because i identify an important level of support resistance or that uh, that higher time frame trend line that we just saw in here on the on the nasdaq that i will just blindly um set up a sell order in here right i want to see how price is approaching the the zone like right. is there is is actually this the best one to look for it right so we need to to look a little bit left to actually find out if this is actually the um, a good zone or if there is anything else on the left side that maybe is a little bit better for price to to go and react from uh, and then after we see it, I find that like okay how is the approach now like this price is price kind of slowing down is price still moving uh, really strongly um, towards that zone maybe there's not even the price is moving that strongly without showing signs of uh, of weakness of slowing down maybe it's not the right moment to to still look for that um, for that sell uh, and in this case if you are still looking for longs or for that trend continuation maybe it's a good sign to carry on and looking for um, for that continuation right maybe maybe in this case maybe it's a good uh, sign for it to Look for this breakout strategy, maybe and go and go look for longs on the on the Nasdaq since price um, has been kind of respecting previous previous lows. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit um, about everything and interactive as well. So participate on the participate, ask questions, and uh, yeah, and uh, interact with me. So space um orders maybe and uh, aside from that in or as a continuation or uh, as a result of maybe understanding uh, where is the spice um where are the orders which orders have been rejected that should have been uh, respected uh, maybe we can start slowly finding out as well how to start making predictions basically i'm just going to be using uh, support resistance supplies and demands and maybe some trend lines if you want. I'm not going to be using any any indicators um, in here, right? Um, so spice, right? So let's just review the concept of spice a little bit um, because that may help. So spice, space in the market, right? Um, yep. So let's just review again. So. Yeah, there you go. We have this rectangle. We may have two levels, right? You may have these lows and you have these highs. Uh, that price wants to go uh, dance in between these uh, in between these two levels, right? Price will do will be bouncing between here. Let's pretend that this is two range markets. That is a resistance and this is a support, or this is a supply and this uh, this is a demand and this is a supply. Right, so how can you find space in here, right? And let's draw a mid-level, mid-level line in here. All right, so, okay, let's pretend that we have this one. Um, yep, and price is coming from the highs quite nicely. And now pauses in here. Let's pretend this was a previous level of support resistance. Uh, price pauses and goes a little bit up and eventually eventually breaks this, um, breaks this level. And now it creates... What usually okay what is usually support maybe become resistance and that's exactly what happens and price will just um will just carry on and go and it reaches its final zone right um uh, perfect so it reaches its final target which is this demand from here we need to be 
uh, waiting and try to see what price will do next right is price going to respect his demand and maybe go higher or by any chance he's going to break it and maybe it's going to continue to go further down okay so at this point if you're looking for shorts i wouldn't advise anyone to look for shorts in here until by any chance we break this low and maybe now we open space kind of to look a little bit further down and uh, when we do break these lows in here maybe that's a good zone to look for short let's pretend that this was the next place available so maybe this could be a good a good zone for shorts right uh, if by any chance you start wanting to look for longs uh align with this support we um, align with this um yeah support or demand zone um what we would like to see now is that um, confirmation that price is actually about to reverse one way to kind of try to pay attention to uh, if price is about to reverse of course is for example a break of this high right maybe the break of uh, of this high could be one indication that price is actually about to, to reverse to the upside right maybe if you have this maybe now yes maybe now we can start uh, giving this indication okay price just broke this high maybe now it wants to go higher uh, and now how could you try to participate on the move right how can we actually find that uh, level to to look for longs right is it going to be where would it be right would it be still a retrace to these lows would it be kind of just a, a break a retest and a continuation to the to the upside right press retests break out and goes higher or it will be too late for here uh, our price actually still wants to go a little bit further down before that uh, before that reverse right that usually happens as well um, to be honest the break of this low or if you're expecting even this low to be broken uh, still after we have the break of this high uh, most likely this uh, zone this low in here it shouldn't really react from uh, from the demand Let's pretend that this low would actually kind of react a little bit above it and then you have that break of a high and now yes now there's maybe still the chance or the high probability that price actually is still going to go below this low and react from this demand and then yes and then now we have this new break of this high and now we can actually look for um, for the longs so that's usually one of the ways or one of the situations where actually this low that broke this high is still going to be kind of uh, let's call it faked out right before actually the the final reversal that's usually when it happens is because this low is not still reacting from the good zone on the left side so we always need to always 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 need to pay attention to what's going on on the left side um, in order to find out if this is actually a good zone or not to start looking for longs aside from breaking this high on the way up and uh, so yeah so if we actually are sure that this low is actually reacting from a good zone and if we then see this high being broken that's actually a good sign then to look for a for a long and that's usually what you can do you can easily look for at the demand zone or you can even look at the support resistance um, and that could be uh, one, one way to to look for that Another situation, instead of just breaking this high, could be, uh, for example, let's pretend that we had some kind of uh, trend line in here, right? Maybe we had some kind of uh, accumulation of small highs, and when we see that trend line be broken, uh, maybe that could be another trigger. Okay, price just broke this trend line. Maybe we are going to have that opportunity to look for um, for the longs, or could be another. If you have a moving average on your chart, if you follow it, maybe that break of a moving average, that crossover between price and moving average, one or more than one moving average, depending on how many you, do you want to use, could be another trigger to, okay, this is my confirmation that now price is about to, to reverse. Instead of guessing, actually, let's wait for that, uh, for that trigger, for that sign that actually price is telling us, okay, price wants to turn, right? So it's through these topics regarding that webinar that I did about, um, front side and back side so when should we actually when should we actually look for the for the entry right when price is approaching the level um actually wait for that break either of a high or of that trend line that maybe tells you okay this is actually a good zone to look for um, 
like price is showing me that it's actually is about to reverse because it gives me the indication that it broke. If price will just carry on, keep respecting and respecting and respecting this um, these previous highs, maybe there's still not the moment to to look for that buy and price will most likely just continue to reverse. It's going to be really it's not going to be often that you can that you see just price bouncing and completely shooting through. Maybe if there is any news, maybe that could happen. Maybe it can be even super fast price just to do this and continues to the to the upside. Uh, but more often than not, you actually are going to have that confirmation that price will after the break of the high or the trend line still going to test a little bit and is going to react from it. Um, so that's a good confirmation. Now, usually how price behaves around this when it creates the lows. So it's something like this. So let's pretend that price is going down. All right. Um, let's make it even break a new high here. It's perfect. And I create that fake out. And there you go. So usually price will create uh, some demand in here. So there's going to be some kind of decision point when it, after creating this low, the lower low, low we are going to have some decision point next to it, right? So this is decision point. It's usually what we would say that uh, where price makes the decision to, one second, instead of going to the downside, uh, one second, just change these colors. Instead of price going uh, like kind of retesting and going continue to downside, price actually is going to do the opposite. So price from here, it actually decides to kind of hold and goes up. So there's going to be a decision in here. Someone is going to set, put a, an order or whatever, uh, some institutional, I don't know, it's going to set to, to place an order that actually is going to decide, okay, enough, price has been going down way too much. Now it's time to, to go higher, right? So there's going to be some kind of demand in here. And usually it's even nice to see that this kind of decision it even breaks some, some kind of high on the left side. In this case, it could be this high. So let's pretend if you now start looking for the highs, this is a great indication as well. So in this case, kind of we had that high being broken and then price still made this fake out. So I'm kind of explaining more of this scenario because it's actually, it happens more often than not than actually price just to, just reacting straight away from there without faking out um, the level. This is all because of liquidity. Um, so you're going to have kind of liquidity underneath those lows uh, or above the highs, and you need that liquidity for price to, for the orders to be filled by the institutionals. Um, so yeah, so what you carry on doing is, yep, we create this first one, and then, and then after kind of the break of it, or aligned with this, Okay, let me make sure you, one second. Let me just read this one. Yeah, let's carry on with the drawing. Even before we break this high, we are going to create a second one. There you go. And now we have a proper break to the to the highs. Maybe that's too much already. Okay, we broke it. And now we have another demand. And this, will be, this is what you have. You have the first one, and now you have the second one. All right, so these are two levels of high probability that price will react from it. Um, it can, in this case, it can, okay, it can just compute and shoot through to the moon without even retesting these levels. Most likely then these levels are going to be left behind and they will be respected in the future. However, most more often than not, they're going to see price going back and now respects, usually it respects first this demand and then it goes higher and leaves this one, the second one. So this is the first one. Uh, let's just make it a color. So the orange one is kind of the first one and uh, the blue one is the second one. So, yep. So usually price will actually react from this one, take the orders from this demand and it goes and goes and breaks a new high and everything is perfect. And then eventually in the future, price will retrace. And, and sometimes actually when it retraces, it's even before the major move to the to the upside. And uh, so this break of this high is also a good information already, which it already broke this high. And uh, price wants to go higher. Uh, first indication doesn't mean that it goes straight away, but it starts showing that it wants to go higher. And um, yeah, after we break this one, usually price goes, um, comes back. Uh, 
one second let's create a, a new high good it comes back uh, pauses here for a moment so let's pretend that this demand now it's still going to be respected a little bit and what happens usually is that price starts accumulating all these demands in here which looks like a really nice support zone for price to bounce and go higher um because this level is respected you have a new high second high maybe even a third high and uh, we even have kind of a break of a high in here and uh many people are going to be looking for for longs in here because we have a, a strong support zone however this zone is still fresh there's still space in here so this is there are two ways that i usually call space there are space when we have a break of a high indicating that price most likely wants to go higher or a break of a low indicating that price wants to go lower right so this one opens an uh, indication that price wants to go higher and then there is the space between two levels there is a space between um kind of a demand and another demand or a supply and another supply or a low and that uh, demand right so those usually there are the two times that i call it spice in this case is to look for in here is to look for orders that are still fresh and in this case is actually to look for space that price wants to go and uh, feel in the future like the, the direction that i want to see price uh, going to um yep and usually what price then is going to do before actually then continues to the upside is to go back now takes this one and is going to, to collect the orders from here that were left behind initially and now it's going to to go and go higher right so there are a few ideas in here that now you can look for the entry you can either wait and look for the entry straight away to low or you can wait for that high to be broken or sometimes you again you have that trend line so exactly what you're having here you can have it somewhere in here or you can have it in here to look for that execution right so you want to see that approach of course as we are doing this whatever it's in here is going to be in a lower time frame comparing with the bigger move right let's pretend that this is a one hour move but this one that is going on in here is kind of on the 15 minutes right so we are actually looking for a 15 minutes entry on the one hour kind of move direction that eventually you want to you want to take um yeah and in here there you go you can again just wait for that to uh, break and retest of that uh, previous so you kind of break this high and you can look for that uh, retest of that uh, previous uh, resistance become support and you go and you can literally just go up uh, just change the color and you can look for your long in here which is a beautiful price maybe price will trace a little bit more and goes and this is usually actually exactly what i look for uh when i'm looking for entries and uh, for confirmation for entries for execution this is literally kind of my strategy um how price moves what levels price actually creates around here and between the lows the highs uh, the demands that are left behind another good another good level that maybe in the future then price will react from it's going to be aligned with this all these lows all these previous support um and aligned with this last supply zone so this is the last supply that is created uh, when this low is um, so it's the last supply that created the the last lower low right this is the the lower low of this of this move and whatever decision is made in here it's usually a good zone for price to come back and kind of react in the future so if you just set a, uh, place a horizontal line a line, a line with this level it becomes a really important zone that you're going to see in the future price pinpointing between around that um, that level uh, to look for um, to look for an entry so this is about entries about confirmation to look for uh, to look for an entry so this is execution part and um, this is what i want to see around here when price is creating this and when price is uh, approaching this level right so all this is the same waiting for that confirmation and this is usually how price can uh, can behave so even today on euro dollar today on pound dollar and um, on the at the lows on the ethereum uh, at highs at ethereum at the lows at bitcoin uh, we're going to see a few examples of so how price behaved in here it's exactly this but just reverse it right we are looking for longs in here and here is just about shorts um the lows as well on the left side exactly the same the same thing 
uh, yeah, get confirmation, break of a high, especially if it's even better if you do break a high again, that's just even reinforces the move that actually price about reverse. And there you go. Um, yeah, uh, maybe any questions so far? Uh, if I haven't confused anyone, um, let me carry on. This most likely is going to be it's it's recorded. You're going to need to rewatch it again if you want to to maybe get a grasp of everything. Um, yeah. Any any questions? No. Okay. Important points. Look left. See where the wall is reacting from. Wait for the reverse. Wait for a confirmation that price actually wants to reverse. So there is a point of analysis identifying the zone. Second point, when price reaches that level, wait for that confirmation that actually price is shifting, right? It goes from uh, moving down to now kind of accumulation to the upside. So we don't really need to try to force a trade. In the first stage, that's usually the wrong timing to look for the entry. So because usually price is going to kind of create a, that this uh, U-shape in here. And it's easy to get trapped and to have FOMO and try to look for longs when price is still in this stage. And usually we are going to have, um, even if your entry is perfect, you're still going to lose because price hasn't really finished the, the third to turn. And then there is a second moment, right? After we actually create this low, kind of let's call it this low, then you have that confirmation that maybe, okay, price just broke the structure. And now we are going to be on the second, uh, on the second uh, phase of the move, right? Which is kind of uh, on the on the right side of the move, on the right side of the of the V shape or of the this U shape, right? And this is what you want to be. You want to try to look for the trade or for the entries uh, around here, right? After we have that uh, that reaction from from the low. How do we have it again? It's going to be with confirmation. Like find those filters, find the whatever variable. It's a crossover moving average. Going to be RSI coming above fifty or uh, showing some divergence can help as well. Or break of a highs or break this trend line. So because if you if you by any chance if you look for the entry on the right side, even if you have a bad entry, most likely you can still manage to have a um, a winning trade. If you look for trades on the left side, even with your, even with the best entry possible that you may be trying to find out, um, for example, by best entry possible could be kind of price creating it. You still kind of enter it through tests and expecting price to do this, uh, but price you're still going to lose it because price eventually is going to still break this fall. Um, but on the other side, after a price actually turned and it's on this side, even if, like, for example, let's pretend that this is low. Even if you don't enter in here or even in here, uh, this could be maybe the best entries possible after you have the low created. Even if you enter somewhere in here, like a little bit already far away from the low, you are still going to have the win because you already are kind of are on the right side of the of the move. And most likely you are going to have that momentum that's going to help you to for price to reach your um, your target, right? So best entry possible, you are still going to lose. Even with the with the wrong entry, most likely you are still going to to have the benefit and to, to win it. I have a question. Yeah, Manny. Uh, in terms of setting the risk to reward for the long, how long mm -hmm. would you set it? At? How long would you set your risk to reward ratio? How long would you um, like set your, where would you set your stop? And mm -hmm. how, how, uh, yes, yeah, so stop and target, one. right? Uh, yeah. So and, and yes. then, yeah. So, so yeah, stops and targets. Good question. Um, so stops. Uh, I want to see uh, at least below this wall, right? At least below the wall that is created, and there is a high probability that even the best zone, actually, or the safest zone to look to place a stop, it will be even below. Uh, this demand zone, right? Let's pretend that price is reacting from here instead of just placing your stop. Uh, underneath this low, uh, maybe the safest per place is actually this low because in reality this low is actually reacting from this demand and this is actually the demand that price is reacting from, uh, not exactly just from here. Uh, but if you want, you can just place it in here, at least below this low. Uh, of course, it's been a topic in, in uh, some of the webinars with uh, trade reviews, right, that we are a little bit uh, uh, eager or 
maybe too greedy uh, that you even place your stop loss even above this low. And what has happened is that actually you could kind of just get stopped out for price to just to to reverse uh, because you are not really placing your stop loss based on the on some technicals that actually tells you, okay, I am wrong because you want to place your stop loss in a position that's going to tell you um, that you are actually wrong on your analysis. Right? When are you wrong in here? First of all, maybe if price breaks this way, it's going to tell you, okay, I'm wrong, but you are 100% wrong. Most likely, if you actually press, then eventually breaks this and this demand. But okay. Uh, if you press it in here, be aware that you can still be stopped out. And if price actually reverses again, maybe you can carry on and looking for a second uh, for a second trade, right? Uh, it, it happened just today for me on the, on the pound. Got stopped out first. And I know that my in the tire suppose was a little bit aggressive price did did the kind of reverse again give me the entry and i entered again and second time now i won the trade glad it was a risk reward higher than one so i ended up making money between the losing and winning trade and so yeah but be aware of that so that's one point to be aware of it and set up a strategy or a, on your own strategy uh, set up the rules of can you re-enter the trade or not? Or be aware of at least of those situations. In terms of targets, uh, which is perfect question as well, great question. And now this is where the second part of the space of these breaks of the highs um, on the way, it can help you to identify the next target. Um, as a conservative target, I would always say kind of place the target still within the next level of structure, which is kind of, let's say, still within this this high so still below this high so don't don't really for the first target conservative uh, of course it depends if you if, if you are partial close or not how many how many targets you actually um, you are going to have if just one if it's just if it is just one target okay at least the two to one or 1.5 to one would be recommended but if you have multiple targets uh, i would recommend at least the first one to be cons a conservative one which is kind of still to be underneath this high like right? even though we actually have the break of the high in here we don't really need to fight price in terms of expecting price to break an important level of structure to reach our target you want to play safe with that aspect right you want to be our target to be reached with a high probability uh with with the highest probability probability chance to to succeed which is in this case still above this uh, still underneath this this high after this high is broken now a new horizon uh, appears, right? And now it it will now depends on where are we in the bigger picture for the second target. Like where are we exactly? Like where is this uh, where is this low reacting to on the left side? Is this maybe a reacting from a daily demand? Good, and maybe the next the, and let's pretend that this is a daily demand. This is a daily supply or a daily support level, and this is a daily resistance level. But how that you are looking at is, it's one hour time frame, right? So there's a high chance that, uh, of course, a daily zone, a daily demand is more important than the one hour uh, move, right? Whatever is being created in here, most likely there's maybe a chance that from this daily demand, we are actually are going to maybe fill out the space until the next daily supply. Right, so maybe you are actually in a massive trade in here. If you manage to to find those opportunities on a higher time frame, maybe you're actually in a really good zone to look for that trade. If by any chance you this setup or for the longs, if by any chance you are looking for that long in here, um, yeah, in this case, just look for that for that target to approach this next zone. Right, don't uh, like the risk reward of this setup. By entering in, in here close to the close to the zone, of course, going to be smaller than if you are actually looking at the bottom to try to feel all the way until to until to the top, right? So the expectancy, the expected value of this setup, it also changes changes as well based on the on the zone that you are um, looking for the trade or where price is actually in the moment. Um, so that's important to notice. Uh, second part is of course just the same way that. Uh, price broke this high on the way down and uh, maybe you can find out that price actually has broken new highs so once one super important thing that i also pay attention to is to find out if price is, is going moving down so when it did all this move to downside if price is going down uh, it actually 
breaks highs on the way down. So this is actually a really good sign that maybe in the future, when price eventually completes this move down, uh, this can be a really good target. So whenever you see a high breaking previous highs and then continue to the downside, that actually can be a really good zone for, um, for a future target. So yeah, somewhere in here could be a good level to look for a target. Or another one is, for example, as I mentioned before, and I've been mentioning with the concept of compression, right? If you have that big compression already on the way down, so basically this price as it's going down, it's going always up to collect these previous supply zones. If you have always that big compression, eventually when you break that high, most likely price wants to go and feel how this move that has been compressed. So this can be also a natural target. We just had, again, this example on the Aussie pound dollar, um dollar index um dollar yen some, some something like that on the bigger on the really higher time frame right so basically the lows from to top from 14 of july there was a high probability that price would actually have this massive move to the upside that we have seen um and it, it hasn't even been completed just because the approach to that low, it has been in a massive compression. So all this, it may take a lot of time to be completed when price is moving this compression. So it may take, I don't know, if this is a daily time frame, just like in the other examples, it may take a few weeks to maybe even a month or even a little bit more to go until it reaches out this move down. And then usually if you have this massive compression to the downside, then price, when it's about actually to turn, it may take just kind of, I don't know, a, a third or even a quarter of the of the time to, to feel this price, right? So it takes kind of one month to, to make all this move down. It takes maybe one week to just completely make all this move up. And if you find these zones, that's beautiful. Uh, just wait for the turn. Then you actually you have, you see that well, that kind of fast high being broken. That's a massive, uh, a massive level to, to look for a huge, huge trade. Uh, of course important where is this uh, well reacting to on the left side right so we can go a little bit just to check those those charts just to see exactly the high probability chance that actually we have we were about to have this massive reversal and um, on the pound on the aussie on the dollar index and uh, even euro dollar right so this helps to find final targets in terms of looking at the bigger picture if you are aware of it even if you are aware of this situation uh, let's pretend that you are not even, you didn't manage to go long in here, right? So you are still not long in here. You are still not long in here. So, you, but if you are, if you are aware of this situation, uh, this at least should put you in a, in a position of, okay, I'm going to be careful actually with, uh, with any shorts in here, or if by any chance I'm looking for shorts, um, because if you are like me, you can, um, I, I like to trade counter trend trades. Um, so even though kind of I know that price is about to go and continue and go all the way there, most likely maybe I will find some kind of small retraces along the way. Because if this is a daily time frame, maybe on the on a day-to-day -day basis, like on a daily intraday sessions, maybe there's going to be kind of a, I don't know, a, a 30 pips or 40 pips retrace uh, that price will make after it reach certain levels. And then just to continue to the upside, right? And kind of stupidity or not, that's actually the the levels that I'm going to be looking for to trade, right? But if I'm aware of that, I'm already conscious of, I'm not going to expect too much from my target because I know that I'm aware that price most likely is going to feel all this move to the upside. So my target is actually is going to be always conservative. On the other hand, if by any chance you are looking for those longs, right? And they are going to, to want you to, to rally all this move to the upside as a trend continuation setup, regardless of maybe where you are actually looking for that trade. Um, you can do the opposite. You know that price maybe is in this uh, bullish market at, at this point. So maybe you want to expand your target, like look maybe for a, a, a bigger target. Let's let's trade the, or let's manage your trade differently. Let's maybe with trail stops, uh, like trailing stops or whatever uh, way you want to find out and you want to practice. Um, that could be an option as well. So it's not just noticing this and use it if you are in a trade, is actually being aware of the situation and use the information that you can see in the bigger picture and start making trading decisions based on what you see on the bigger picture, right? Um, yeah, so counter trend, conservative. Now, if by any chance, in terms of counter trend, 
right? For example, this was like looking for the wrong in here. It was a counter trend, right? Price has been moving down, 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 and down, right? So there's going to be a moment as a counter trend trader that you are going to actually being able to kind of identify, maybe predict, and there you go, find out. Yeah, this is maybe actually the reversal, right? So in here, maybe it's not a good option to to look for uh, targets and shoot to the moon, but maybe there's going to be a specific point. Then okay, price actually is turning. Now maybe when you find this is level, right? When price actually turns uh, this trend line, this high, whatever. Okay, maybe I'm actually in a huge potential trade um, in this situation, right? So it's just use. The same information, like uh, basic. Uh, yeah. A any questions? Any questions? No questions. Yeah. Yeah, Manny. Yeah. No, I was just saying thanks for that. Thank you. Yeah, it's your first day, right? Yes. <laughs> Okay, welcome. Uh, there you go. You just got it. Just got my ten years experience on the market in this last, in this half an hour. Uh, review it. Re re uh, record. Uh, save this recording. You're going to watch it quite uh, quite a few times in the future. Um, yeah, in, the, in a few months it's going to click. You're going to say, "Yep, he said that in the first half an hour. He said that in the first half an hour. It's just going to happen." Um, yep. So if you now continue, we are here. Uh, let maybe delete some stuff. It's maybe too confusing in here. Can I delete this? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's okay. I just want this rectangle in there. Green. Up there. Yep. So there you go. Right. We had this first break of a of a high. Uh, maybe they had this previous level of support resistance. Maybe price can even bounce in between here. And then when they break it, there you go. Kind of it's just trying to find out where those highs are broken. That maybe opens the space towards to the to the next level. Right. That's what you want to find out in terms of uh, of space and then and then in terms of final target for example a nice final target i even broke this one it was not on purpose but this is an example right a high that breaks a previous high in here this could be a natural good level for a final target like i have all this structure in here uh, that kind of price creates it's a it's a lot of liquidity in here this becomes a really nice zone as well to for price to react from here and maybe reverse a little bit right and then what is the natural zone for example uh, as I draw it in here, like let's pretend that this green line, it's actually an important uh, line of support resistance. Kind of, it was maybe tested in here, it was tested in here, it has been tested in here. It's going to be respected a little bit in here until it's broken. Um, and yeah, so this can be actually then a really nice zone to for the trend continuation. Maybe price will just trace from here and it becomes a really good zone for, um, for the continuation, to look for longs around this level. And again, what levels do those prices you react from? It's going to react from kind of support resistance zones, maybe some trend lines, but it usually reacts from support resistance and from um, and from demand levels, uh, demand su supply demand levels. So when when you actually break this level of this green line, this level of previous support resistance, price still pauses for a bit, and again there's going to be some decision in here, some kind of move, some decision point, just the same decision point that is created in here, and uh, that's going to decide. Okay. This is no longer uh, too expensive. This is actually kind of cheap. Let's actually break and uh, go above this uh, this level, right? So in this case, the buyers are actually going to overcome completely the sellers. There's going to be some really strong order in there, and that's actually what's going to happen. And now we kind of have a new demand zone in here, right? That usually most likely price will eventually react from in the future. Um, so this become two great zones to look for. Kind of the previous level of support resistance and you have this demand level in there so when price retraces it can kind of react from one of the two uh, from this previous level of support in here if it reacts from the previous level of support resistance it's going to leave this zone fresh for the future right there you go 
this one is now fresh because price didn't react it from there. So eventually, price will actually come back. Pretend that this now previous well support resistance is working, but it's not because this is going to happen, right? And now from here, price will make a decision. Uh, it's going to actually react from here and kind of, okay, price is in here. And now it's going to make a decision. It breaks it, right? It reacts from here. It reacted from these orders, from this fresh demand that was still fresh, right? Took the orders. And now price needs to make a decision. Is it going to respect this level and continue just to the downside? Or is it actually kind of breaking it and go higher and maybe react from here now, right? So it's around this level, exactly when price is in here, that a, a big, an important decision is made as well, right? Because we just broke this level kind of to downside, kind of maybe are telling that price wants to go down. However, uh, in reality, this is actually a good zone. So is price actually going to continue to go down uh, or is going to actually continue to go up? One of the ways that maybe we can find out about it is we can ask ourselves, where is actually price coming from? So where is actually this high? coming from in here. Uh, literally, basically what I'm actually drawing in here, right, uh, is actually kind of what's going on in here on the, it would, what was going on in here on Ethereum on the left side. Just to can have some, some idea, right? All right, do you have this place? Do you have basically this demand zone? We have all these lows, which is kind of, these lows that are created in here, and you have this demand zone. By the point that price breaks these lows as natural, eventually in the future, and it reacts from the demand, price will go higher. And in here, it's going to make a decision. It's going to make the decision to respect it and continue. It's going to break it, and there's a high probability that then price will eventually continue to go higher. Why did price go higher? Maybe if you take a look at where actually these highs are reacting to, maybe these highs haven't really reacted from that level of support resistance, which actually happening here. So maybe there was that chance that price actually just wants to take these lows and respect this demand to then fill the rest of the space that this high never reacted from or never took. So it's important to find out where is this high reacting to on the left side. Okay, if this high by any chance what had already reacted from this supply zone that eventually price wants to go to from this move up, so maybe price will just do this. Maybe price will just break these lows worked out as an engulf to the downside and now react from here and now react from here from whatever supply it was created and now continue to go down right but if actually price is not uh, if actually price is reacting from it, it hasn't really reached the final target maybe there's going to be the opposite just as it happened in here on ethereum so price will actually maybe to go to do this if I just even look at this now, Jesus, one second. Now again, what we have in here, this is dollar CAD. We have this demand. We have all these lows. We have price reacting from the demand. We have price reacting from here. Price in here is going to make a decision around, uh, somewhere aligned with this. And we have a supply line there. Price will either break it and continue or it's going to respect it and it goes and it's going to continue down. Like, but again, price respected the demand just below this double low. And it's going to make a decision in here. Maybe reason, maybe in this case, this high is actually maybe reacting from a good zone on the left side. It's actually maybe reacted from a, a zone that maybe it's enough for price to go down. Right? If price maybe at pause in here, break this low, maybe it still wants to go higher. Okay. So it's just exactly the same concept. You are going to see this happening quite often. A clear fresh demand zone, price bounces from it, and now price make, needs to make a decision in here. Okay, so it's just exactly, it's in kind of the opposite of what Ethereum did, right? Ethereum didn't pause in here, went down. Ethereum actually reacts from here and just continue to go higher, All right? So these two scenarios are exactly two examples of what I'm just, uh, of what I just mentioned. So if you go back to this madness of this drawing, uh, yeah, so exactly in here. So it's important to know where this high is reacting to and what kind of information then we gather, right? And the most beautiful thing about this is actually then um, if price by any chance actually wants to go higher from here, 
the reality is that this break of these lows, it's actually at the same point still an engulfed on. It's maybe showing that price is actually giving us an indication that actually may may want to reverse uh, in the near future. Maybe not immediately, but in the near future, it's about to do that, right? Maybe after now reacting from here, because actually price broke some lows on the way up. It's actually already giving us beautiful information that is about to reverse. So maybe now, again, let's actually just draw something better in here. But not so strongly. A little bit of a compression. And now we do the opposite, right? If price now starts compressing, uh, even break up this low just to give already some target in there, uh, price can then react from here. So what we have now, um, we have kind of price which had uh, this important high in here this high may become now previously our support resistance quite beautiful maybe we can even have this trend line drawing somewhere in here and that shows okay price reacted from there price goes up now it finally touches it and now it goes back gives indication that it wants to go down and now it reverses completely to the cycle whatever i'm drawing in here now i'm drawing in here but to the opposite and now there you go this is a beautiful maybe information that now price wants to reverse. We already break broke maybe this low on the way up. We already broke this one as well on the way up. And price now is ready to just continue. So this becomes already a, a, a breakdown. Target can be further down. Maybe target's going to be now this previous um, level of demand that was left behind because these guys never really came here. And there you go. And you just go from cycle to cycle, ups and downs, just following what price is doing. And just that's it. If by any chance price uh, instead uh, it came down, respect this low, continue to go higher. We have this low in here, respect one more time. Price respects the next low. There's maybe a high probability that price will eventually broke, break this high. Okay. If we st if you if as price is approaching an important zone that you want to, in this case, kind of look for shorts, but price isn't breaking any low on the way up there's a high probability that that zone is actually going to just be broken and price will just create a new higher high and it just continue to the upside until eventually is going to show some weakness. Okay, so this is a high probability. This is a an information that you can use it on the, on the opposites, right? So if you see breaks of the lows, it, straight away, it, uh, it gives you some signals. Oops, be careful. Price may be about to turn. And you can use, again, information if you are a counter trend or, or if you are looking for longs all the way up, right? It, you still can have both information. You can be, oops, cautious now. Price is broke low. Maybe after reaching this kind of zone, maybe price is about to, to flip. Or if by any chance price is still respecting it and respecting it, price most likely maybe just going to continue continue to go, to go higher. Um, yeah, it's literally how price moves eventually. Back and sides, and then you have scales. Scales, it will be to be a different topic. Uh, any questions? <laughs>